welcome the new house band, Jason Richardson, into the house. Hey, Jason, nice to see you, man. How's it going? Yeah, nice to see you too, man. Yeah. Pretty good. We're actually having a beer. We're going to have a relaxing time. Mm -hmm. um, because I learned some from some guitar players, if you drink enough and you make mistakes, you can blame the bottle. That too. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah so it won't be our fault if we mess up. You got to tell me about about your guitar. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about why certain things in a certain way. I guess the most... Uh, the most personal thing about this, like, you know, that's catered to me specifically is the switching, uh, the pickup switching. And I feel like it's kind of standard for most guitars. In order to get to the coil tap, you have to do like a second motion in order to activate. Like you have to like put the switch in a certain spot and like in the middle and then hit like a knob. And then that activates the different like routing of the pickups. I don't like the way that uh, it sounds when there's all the coils. So on the JPs, you would put the switch in the middle, it would go to every coil. Yeah. But I would always want the coil tap sound and I couldn't get to that live because sometimes you, know, you don't have enough time to do all those motions in order to activate that sound. So on mine, we just eliminated that step, that second step. So when you put the switch in the middle, it just goes right to coil tap, like right to it. That, that really bright, shimmery kind of sound. Like right away, and then if I already, and then this is the, that's the humbucking bridge, and then right to that bright shimmery coil tap, and then that humbucker. But then I started getting to more of like, a, like the John Mayer kind of like Mateus Asado type stuff, like, like all of that kind of stuff too, just to like broad, kind of broaden stuff I was learning. I was getting kind of bored, and I wanted to learn just more mm -hmm. stuff. I started getting into that, and they sent me an actual cut list too, Music Man, uh, just a triple S, like single, single, single. Yeah. So I wanted to figure out a way to combine like all the JPs that I've been playing and this like Strat guitar that they have too. So now with this one, when the tone knob is up, uh, it's just the bottom coil. Just oh, the one closest to the neck. Yeah. So I that mean, gives you the more bridge. of like that, like like that kind of like really like really bright, like kind of like country kind of sound that you can get out of that. And then when you go to the neck position when this is up, then it's just just the top coil. And then there's a preamp boost too on the volume knob, which is variable. You can open the back and then change it from anywhere to like 10 dB to 20 dB hotter. But like, it is kind of like a cheat code for a legato. It pretty much does like, so this is the preamp off if I were just play some just nonsense legato right now. And then turn it on. It just makes it like, that much easier like you have to try just a little bit less so it doesn't burn your forearm out like quite as much You don't, do you have the six on the that bell top yep. look as well? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so this is uh, available in six now as well, by the way. The uh, just regular burl top, mm -hmm. which is also an insanely gorgeous guitar. It's just pretty much just not red and doesn't have the maple veneer. It does make it sound a little bit different because it's got this really thin maple slab underneath of the Buckeye. Mm -hmm. So, and it is. Or you're on Kemper right yeah. now, and then this this is Axe Effects. So that's that's actually a pretty good AB comparison to hear. That's oh, very different, huh? Yeah. I can't remember what head I'm using. I think I'm using a Friedman head. It's the radius. I know you don't know the radius, but the feel of the radius. <laughs> is it different than a normal cutlass guitar? Because I mean, it's Music Man. Like, you know, like they're obviously using like everything that they've figured out with John over the last like 20 years, for, like all the guitars they've made with other artists, and stuff like that too. It's like an accumulation, you know, of getting to this point that we're at now. One of the other main differences uh, from this of the normal, normal cutlass is it's got a way bigger cutaway. Uh, the, cut the cutaway up into the higher 
Fred, Fred accesses. Yeah, I pretty much never bump my like actual like fist knuckles on this horn. Another thing too is this is shaved down on the uh, bottom horn. That makes just a little bit more room for your knuckles and hand too, and it took some weight off. The guitar is really light, which is, um, that's one of Sterling's things, uh, Sterling Ball. He firmly believes lighter guitars sound better, and I'll have to, I have to agree with him that for mm -hmm. sure. If your maximum budget is $1,000, what's the first guitar you're buying? I would buy my Sterling signature and save 100. There you go. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> but it's only nine. So actually, you probably have enough cushion left over for tax and shipping if your budget is 1,000. This is what I would do. I would go and buy a used one. That's because I know I can check all the frets, leveling, mm -hmm. neck. For someone who's new to playing the guitar, yeah. you got, you got to buy a new one and warrant. Make sure that you know there's no problem. Uh, so you also stream on Twitch? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not as frequently as you. Yeah, <laughs> you've been playing games. I know you've been doing some production and playing guitars and yep, stuff like that. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Tell us about what you did to get your Xbox. I sat outside GameStop for eight hours. <laughs> you could have seen Jason Richardson outside GameStop. So I had this gut feeling around like midnight, 1 a.m. And I was like, I bet there's probably already people there and I couldn't shake the gut feeling. So I was like, I'm just going to go check and see if there's anyone there already. And then I got there and there's already two people there. And I knew that the store had less than 10 consoles total for pre-order. If I want this, I have to stay here. Uh, did you have like a, a tent you were camping out there? Uh, what were you was, doing? It was still relatively warm and everyone there was all there for the same reason. Like everyone, like they were there to get that Xbox. So everyone got along and we just chatted for hours. You have a six setup anyway, computers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think, why don't you just get another graphics card or something else? of getting the consoles. I do have a really badass gaming desktop that I, and it's got like an 11 gigabyte graphics card and all, all of this crazy stuff in it. And it's plenty sick for gaming, but I don't know. I just, I just like console. I like collecting all of that stuff, and like looking at it. On that Through the Fine Flames video, I was playing a $400 guitar. <laughs> really? Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that was an S470. Yeah, I like this guitar. So I got one instead of a Satriani. I wanted a Satriani. Mm -hmm. Because it's a cheaper bridge. Mm -hmm. The saddle, the, basically yeah. the string have cut into the saddle. Too much whammy bar poo and things like that. Yeah, well you're crazy and you do sh like like, I'm, I'm always scared to do that. We're like literally do like this. Like, I don't even want to like, let my hand go off the neck like, to try and <laughs> do stuff like that. I got my first Music Man when I was 14. I saved up over a year for it. And Cutting a lot of lawn, right? Yes. My guitar teacher would pay me $70 to mow his lawn because he knew I wanted the guitar. He was nice enough to wear Matt Mills, shout out, by the way. Uh, anytime I would go and do that, like, he would just give me like 70, 60 bucks to mow his lawn every time I did it. So we, I have a ballad. We want to play that. Sure, let's make some people cry.
you know, after playing fast for so long, mm -hmm. it's like slow down. You kind of go, oh, yeah. What's happening here? I, yeah, it's I don't a lot know what to play. It's a lot easier to just go. I know. So we stuck to <clears> that one. <throat> yeah. Sorry. I was talking to people. I was saying basically we make albums now, but albums don't really sell like it used to. a marketing tool. It's almost like it's a it's a money loser mm -hmm. making an album. You know, how much it costs to make an album and time. The thing though, the way that I've kind of thought about it in my head now is like you need the album and the music in order to sell stuff like this, to like sell this guitar or like Axfix patches or something like that, or like an amp sim plugin or the tabs or something like that. So you don't make any money off people listening to the music anymore, but you can't have those other mediums without it. So it's essentially just like this really expensive, time-consuming marketing tool to exactly sell all of this other stuff. Oh, yep, okay. and you can't have all that other stuff without the that the foundation of that music. Mm -hmm. My first technically like real guitar I got, uh, I actually I lucked out because my dad's a musician too. He played bass. He knew could tell that I wanted to start taking it seriously, so he found like a it was it's, it was still a Gibson, but it was like one of the cheaper ones, like the Studio Gothic Black Les Paul. So mm -hmm. we still have that. Uh, too, at, uh, but that just stays at my parents' house. But that was the guitar I learned on before I saved up for the music. Uh, your, your dad, since he, you know, he's into music and stuff, he was quite happy you started playing the guitar. Uh, he would have been happier if I played bass, but <laughs> but he's still stoked. <laughs> Seriously, bass? Well, he plays bass. He's still, got, he's got like he's got like you two... kind of you kind of two bass players in the band. No, he if can't. you play the guitar, you can jam. Well, he's not, but he's not bummed. Yeah, <laughs> he's definitely not bummed. That's for sure. Um, is he quite happy that you're playing like music as a living kind of thing? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. I mean, you can imagine my parents, Asian parents, and it's totally true. You guys, it's yeah. not a stereotype. It's like, oh my god. First, it's like, oh, my son is playing music instead of video games. That's a good thing. Then it's like, oh shit, he's growing his hair long. Yes. Yeah. That's even worse. He should be playing video games. For being a high school dropout, I'm pretty doing pretty well. I like to think. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, I'm not bummed. I don't even have a GED. I had, I had scholarship uh, to Berkeley. It wasn't a full ride, but it was like a, still a few, th like a few thousand dollars a semester, which that's an expensive school, so anything helps at that point. But that was my game plan if touring and stuff didn't work out, because I was gonna go there. But then I joined uh, All Shall Parish, different band, all in it. That was my first touring band, and pretty much just went from there. Here now, we are. Now we're here. Yeah. We've got signature guitars. Yep. Let me just get. I'm gonna start getting some talent enhancement devices coming up. This will enhance my talent. When you run out of ideas, you know. <laughs> start whining. If you love what you what you hear, <laughs> get some of his tabs, learn some of his shit. You won't be, get as good as him, but you can try. Oh, actually, maybe you will, but yeah, never say that. Yeah, just practice a lot. You got guitar lessons as well? Yeah, there's some lesson stuff up there for sure. Like uh, one of my big things, I remember we talked about this on one of the last streams that uh, we did, where I like to eliminate barring from pretty much every arpeggio shape that I play. Um, so like, 
you know, like the this shape, for example. So a quick little uh, lesson, but like this minor chord right here. And, you know, people would typically, if they were to play that, they would just bar like like that, where you would have to like palm mute the yeah, whole thing in that. order to get it to not ring out. So the way that I do it is I just finger everything individually. So if you're not barring, there's no chance of uh, anything to ring together. So the way I finger it, well, it looks like this. You don't really have to like rely as much on your right hand hugging the strings. So the, instead of barring it, I do it like this. Takes a little bit like to change your muscle memory, but basically, no. yeah, because there's no there's no chance of like those notes ringing together. Oh man, dude, look, look, I'm starting to get a blood blister. See it coming in? I see it. Oh yeah. my god, you! <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Oh my god. <laughs> We did it. Can you believe it? We did it. That's definitely the most notes we ever done on my street. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. Am I yeah. going to get my guitars back? Did I play enough? Yeah, you can have them back. I'm it getting <laughs> another one built for me. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah. Have a great one. Take care. Bye. Peace. See you guys. Shred on. <laughs>